Hello everyone, my name is Larseth and welcome to the first video in what will probably be a eh, reasonably, reasonably um, sort of short series, I'm guessing probably about 15 episodes at the moment, something like that. A video is of variable length which will go over from really the very basics up into some slightly more sort of intermediate advanced um, way, well basically what is the auction house, how it could be used to make money and other sort of various methods of, you know, making gold in World of Warcraft. Um, so especially with Legion coming out, it brought a huge amount of new players to the game um, just because of the deal they did alongside the movie. And I was having a conversation with somebody the other day um, who was new to the game, who was basically posting a load of items on the auction house, which either weren't, post, weren't, weren't worth posting at all, um, or they were posting them at much reduced prices. So this that was sort of the incentive for me to make this guide. Um, so I'm on my main at the moment. Uh, this isn't the character that I post all my auctions on. Um, but the reason I'm on it is so I can show you essentially what the, the auction house UI works like. So first of all, what is the auction house? I mean, it might sound obvious. Um, but it's gone through a few changes over its lifetime in this game. Which, you know, make that question actually valid. Um, so it's... It, in the game, it's a way of exchanging items that are basically not soulbound. So soulbound items, you can't trade. Um, those are items which are bind on pickup, essentially. So it, you can't trade those. So this is a way of change, exchanging for money items in the game that are either bind on equip or don't have any bindings, such as um, most materials, for example. So what used to be the case is that you could only trade between factions. So Horde could only trade with Horde, Alliance could only trade with Alliance, and then there was a neutral auction house which was located in places like Booty Bay, which is down here, or Ratchet, which is just over... where is it? No, there. There's Ratchet. Um, as of Warlords of Draenor, that is no longer the case. As of, as of Warlords of Draenor, um, the factional um, auction houses have been combined. That means that you can buy stuff across factions. So somebody who's posting an auction where I am in Stormwind, their auction could be bought by somebody who's sat in Orgrimmar. Um, and that's good for a number of reasons. It expands the number of people buying and selling, increases the number of stuff on the auction house, it increases... I mean, it does increase competition, but it, it overall I think is more good than bad. So that's something worth bearing in mind. Um, auction houses are located all over the place. There's one in every capital. So Stormwind, Undercity, Silvermoon, Ironforge, Orgrimmar, Thunderbluff, the Exodar, and Darnassus. There are also ones in both shrines in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, although you can only access those if you have engineering. There are also ones in Dalaran, in Legion, um, I believe, again, you require... Do you require engineering for that one? I think you do. And the same, again, for the Dalaran in Northrend. If I can, I think, I'm not sure if you can actually view the thing there. No, you can't. Um, yeah, so there's, there's... The main ones that people go to, as you can see, are the ones in the main cities. So let's get into, actually, you know, what the layout of the auction house is. So by default... And I will go on to add-ons later. So by default, this is what the auction house UI looks like. It's quite outdated, um, which is why lots of people, including myself, use add-ons. I'm just showing this for sort of completedness, I guess. So there are three tabs. Browse. This is where you look through all the items. Um, you could search level range, um, rarity, usable items, display on character. So display on character, that just means, for example, if I click this and then click on an item, it will equip that transmog. That's not a very good example. Let's have a look for a, a helm instead. There we go. It'll e equip that item on my character. So you can see what it'll look like. Alternatively, you can hold down control on your keyboard and click on the item and it'll do that as well. Um, so this interface is fairly standard um, and there's pretty much everything you could think of um, the only other thing that's worth mentioning is game time, this separate thing. A few, well, I can't remember how many months ago it was now. Um, 
Blizzard introduced the WoW token, which is basically you could buy it in game for gold, and it adds 30 days of game time to your World of Warcraft account. So what somebody has done is they have paid real world money, so their pounds, their dollars, their euros, whatever, for this token that they can sell in game. So they are basically trading real world money for in game currency. Currently, it's 109,000. This fluctuates a little bit, but on EU, it seems to have only increased. It's about half this price on NA, North America, as far as I'm, far as I'm aware. And on the South, Southeast Asia servers, like it makes you want to cry. It's like 250,000 gold, as far as I'm aware. Anywho, moving on. You also have another tab, bids. I can't remember the last time I put a, a bid in on something. Bids are used, so normally when you have a, an item on the auction house, um, as you'll see, you will have a bid price and a buyout price. Normally the bid price is a little bit less, as you could see in this situation. So what will happen sometimes is people will bid. Um, you could put a bid on the item and it'll appear here. And if somebody outbids you, you'll get the money back. The reason that most people don't bid is, one, they want the item straight away. They're impatient, so they'll pretty much always do the buyout. And two... If you bid on something, you know, you go to bed, for example, somebody else will just come along, outbid you, and then, you know, you would have lost that item that you, might have been quite rare that you wanted. So it sort of makes it a bit pointless. The only time I can see bids as being useful is when there is a quite expensive item that nobody else is likely to buy, but bidding on it will save you a few thousand gold. Normally... People will negotiate with really expensive items outside of the auction house um, to avoid the deposit fees and stuff like that. Um, not deposit fees, the sort of sales fees. Um, but that's sort of a, a separate matter, which we'll get into later. Auctions tab. This is where you put stuff up for auction. So normally you would get something from your bags, drag it into here, and then you could set the various prices. When you post something to the auction house, have I got anything in here that I could post? I'm not going to post it because I want to keep these. Um, but you could choose per unit, per stack. So a stack is, in this case, would be two. Items have different amounts that they go up to. It used to be 20 for pretty much everything. And now it's 200 for a lot of things. Um, but you could post it for different re uh, sort of amounts. You'll also see the duration you can change. 12, 24, 48. And you'll also see with that, the deposit changes. So the deposit, this is a price you pay on each individual auction. And that varies hugely depending on what item. So it can, materials, for example, the deposit tends to be very low. Whereas if you have a piece of gear, I don't have one in my bags that I can put up at the moment uh, on the auction house. But the, the deposits on gear tend to be quite high, um, which is important if you start trying to sell gear as a, uh, as a method of income, as the, that, those costs can add up quite a lot. Um, but yeah, so you can deposit for different amounts of time. How much time you'd want to deposit for depends largely on how, many, how much competition there is or sort of how rare the item is. If an item is very rare and there's not going to be anyone else posting it, you might as well put it up for 48 hours. If an item, if there's a lot of competition, loads of items about, you're probably going to be out under like undercut which i'll explain terminology in the next episode um but you're probably going to be undercut or somebody will basically post something a bit lower price than you so setting it at 12 hours means you don't pay as much for the deposit and it means you can post it back up again um pretty quickly now if you have a lot of items this would take forever and a day to deal with so that's why a lot of people use add-ons which again i'll deal with in another episode um once you buy something off the auction house, so say I was to buy this, this would appear in my uh, mailbox, of which there is almost, there's always one outside an auction house or nearby. Um, that will appear in my mailbox instantly. If I, if this seller, so Kapara, the person who's selling it, they will get a notification that will come up here in their auctions thing saying, you know, this has been sold, the high bidder is me. And then it will say time left, like 59 minutes, because it takes an hour for the money to go from essentially me to them. So I get the item instantly, but it takes them an hour to get the money. So they'll, you have to wait an hour to get that. And once they get that, they will get 48,000 
850 less 5% sales fee. So on every single um, auction, no matter what it is, you if you sell it, you instantly lose 5%, which is why on a lot of really expensive items, a lot of people will do deals outside of the auction house. So the seller will save a few thousand gold normally. Um, so that's that. And I think that sort of covers it for the basics. In the next episode, what we're going to do is start going over some terminology um, to do with sort of making money and stuff like that. There will be quite a lot of, quite a lot of terms, um, but a lot of them would never make sense unless you have them had them explained to you or, you know, viewed forums where they are explained. Um, so I'm going to go over those and hopefully they'll you might think you, you might think oh i've i've seen that in chat and now you know what that means um and it will basically gradually build up sort of your knowledge until you can you know start learning what all these methods are and then use all these terminology to you know you'll know how to apply various terminology and stuff like that know what it means um but thank you very much for watching and i hope this helped i mean this one was pretty much very basics so i understand that most intermediate or certainly long-term players probably would find little to no use in this. Um, but certainly if you're a new player, I hope this helped you. Um, and I will speak, speak to you in the next episode. Take care.